the growl of a hopped up American V8 is probably the last sound you would have expected to hear in war torn 1990s Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yet amidst the chaos and devastation, that's the unmistakable rumble many victims of the war learned to love, as they eagerly awaited the arrival of the blacked out Camaro with the yellow rubber duck. While the car looked like it had driven straight out of a Mad Max film, the driver was a Danish soldier who had honed his skills with the Jaeger Corps, trained alongside Green Berets, braved treacherous waters with the Frogmen, and descended from the skies as a paratrooper. But despite his military prowess, Helga Meyer didn't carry a gun in the car. Instead, he claimed that his beloved Bible was his most valuable tool, as he drove through the night fueled by gasoline and faith to deliver food, medical supplies, and toys to those in need. This is a story of courage and Camaros, of hope and hot rods, and of nurture and nitrous. This is the story of the Ghost Camaro and God's Rambo. Helga Meyer is the kind of guy who gets his kicks from going on what he calls psychological walks, typically 100 kilometer treks through tall sand dunes and water while dragging along other soldiers as part of their training. He started this practice back in 1972 and continued for decades, even into retirement. On the walks, each participant is allowed one liter of water and either 100 grams of chocolate or 20 cigarettes. Sometimes they'd wear gas masks to make it harder to breathe, but the toughest part of all was that no one was allowed to talk. When soldiers inevitably dropped out, they were given a card explaining how much of a weakling they were and left to fend for themselves and find a way back to base. Helga still wanted more though, and would often crank up the distance to 200 or even 300 kilometers. While he appeared to show little sympathy for those who accompanied him on his walks, he felt the calling to help those in need during the Bosnian War. The Bosnian War was a horrid, ethnically and culturally charged affair considered to be the worst European war since World War II, with multiple groups trying to get their way through any means necessary. The UN, NATO, and European Union tried to help those affected by the conflict, but it wasn't enough, as the large trucks carrying supplies were easy targets for bandits and militia, who wanted to hijack the goods for their own cause, and created checkpoints to ambush aid and charge heavy fees to pass. Before long, certain areas were completely off limits, and it was impossible to help those trapped within the conflict. But Helga had an idea. He wanted to come out of retirement and go straight into the heart of the beast, pairing his years of military training with American muscle to help those who couldn't be helped. He pitched the idea to various humanitarian groups, but they all shot him down. After all, it was a crazy idea, and the funds in human life were more likely to be useful elsewhere. But Helga didn't relent. He was deeply religious and felt that the mission was given to him by God, and so he continued to search for help. He reached out to the US military commander at the Rhein-Main Air Base in Germany and asked if the team could help prep the car that he had bought for his mission from a US serviceman, a 1979 Camaro. Of course, the Americans were in. The Camaro was Chevrolet's answer to the Ford Mustang, although it went through a bit of an identity crisis before it emerged as the American icon it is today. Internally, the car was called the Panther, before a list of over 2,000 C-names were run through to accompany the other C-name Chevys, like the Chevelle, Corvair, and Corvette. The name Camaro was supposedly inspired by the French word for camarade, a friend or comrade, and that would be fitting for this story, but others say the name was chosen long before they knew what it meant. Meanwhile, some executives in the company said a Camaro was a small creature that ate Mustangs. The first generation was rushed out and shouldn't have been a success, but the car was well loved even if it was only made for three years before the second generation arrived. The second gen was heavily inspired by Ferrari and performed incredibly well for the time, but the refined, European-inspired looks weren't for everyone. Again, Chevrolet pivoted and the Camaro evolved year by year, eventually sprouting large, color-matched plastic bumpers. Consumers were loving the changes, and the Camaro was selling better than ever, even passing the Mustang in 1977, before reaching an all-time peak of over 280,000 cars in 1979, the same year as Helga's Camaro. His came with a 350 cubic inch engine, 5.7 liters to make around 170 horsepower. Of course, Helga wanted more, which was a fun challenge for the mechanics and engineers stationed at the airbase, who threw some parts at the engine and tuned it up to around 220 horsepower before adding nitrous, which allowed for 440 horses if Helga ever found himself in a pinch. This meant that even with over 800 pounds of supplies, the car was supposedly still able to go from 0 to 200 kilometers an hour in just 13 seconds. 
the team decided to strip the car down to remove any unnecessary weight before adding back even more in the form of heavy metal plates for body armor, Kevlar sheets in the doors, and steel sheets under the floor pan and to cover the entire rear window. The tires were filled with a special foam to prevent a puncture pulling the car to commission, and a giant plow-like blade was installed on the front to push debris and landmines away from the car. All this was covered in the same paint used on a F-17 stealth aircraft. The result really was a car that looked like something out of Mad Max, but Meyer also wanted to incorporate technology more reminiscent of the kit car. He managed to get a hold on military-grade GPS, a ground-to-air radio to communicate with air support, a thermal imaging camera, a fire suppression system, and infrared lights on the front of the car which could be used in conjunction with infrared illuminating goggles to see at night, which is when Meyer planned to make his run. To finish the stealth look, the windows were blacked out, the exhaust was made quieter, and any interior lights on the car were removed. The only thing which didn't get the stealth treatment was the yellow rubber duck, which usually hid behind the front grille. The airbase also managed to pull around $12,000 worth of goods to deliver, and set him up with some new military gear, including a Kevlar helmet. They offered him a gun too, but Meyer insisted he didn't need it. Although he did carry some more archaic weapons just in case, he primarily relied on his faith and his Bible deciding that he'd paint a new page gold for each successful run he completed. He set to work, plotting his route on a map in invisible ink only visible under a black light, and began filling in the pages of his Bible with gold. He received donations from all over, including the German Bundeswehr, and even the famous Danish toy company, Lego, decided to support their fellow countrymen's quest. It wasn't always smooth sailing though, and he managed to avoid many near-death experiences. On one trip, a sniper's bullet came through his window and mere millimeters from his skull, embedding itself in the Kevlar helmet given to him at the airbase. On another run, the Camaro which had been super reliable suddenly stopped working while driving up a mountain and began rolling back down. Helga started the car and tried again, but it died in the exact same spot, again and again. He took this as a sign and decided to spend the night in some nearby ruins before continuing the next day. This time, the car was fine. But when he arrived and explained his tardiness, everyone was shocked, and explained that because of the car stalling, he had missed soldiers that had been robbing and killing drivers on that very road. Again, Helga thanked God for giving him a sign to avoid another near-death experience, painted another page of his Bible gold, and continued on his quest. A highlight for Helga was in Vares, when he was looking for a place to sleep and noticed a candle and some body heat with his thermal scanner. As he knocked on the door, the candle went out so he knocked again and announced that he was with the US Army. An older gentleman opened the door for him, and there was also a young woman with a newborn baby, all three malnourished and covered in dirt. Helga brought food, water, and soap, and sat with the old man in silence who read his Quran while Helga read his Bible. He left the family to go sleep in his car, but there was a knock on his blacked out windows. He opened the door and found the young woman who placed her baby on his bare chest. Helga claims he will never forget this touching moment, and that it encouraged him to continue to help others. While his military training went a long way, he also developed some more unconventional tactics to avoid dangerous situations. One time, he had a passenger, and as they rolled up to a police checkpoint, he realized that they weren't real officers, as they didn't have the correct shoes. Helga lit a cigar, put on his studded gloves and a headscarf, then instructed his passenger to throw a shirt over his flashlight to pretend it was a gun, and to look menacing and lock the door. Then, one final, unusual instruction. Helga instructed his passenger to pass gas, cut the cheese, break wind. The goal being to make the car smell so unbearable that the fake officers wouldn't want to spend too long with them. In this case though, Helga and the passenger ended up just speeding away after a short interaction, with Helga giving the would-be robbers the finger. Because of acts like this, not everyone was a fan of seeing the black Camaro, and there was even a bounty on the car after it was spotted the same time multiple Serbian planes were shot down which led to the false accusation that Meyer was involved. Thankfully, after three years, the Bosnian War came to an end in 1995, when a peace treaty was signed in America. There was still work to be done though. With more than 2 million people displaced and the country in ruins, Helga and the Camaro continued to work for many more years, and ended up making over 100 trips to those in need. With the help of all the supporters and the Camaro, Helga did a great thing, helping thousands without hurting others, and even earning the moniker God's Rambo. But Helga himself acknowledges that his efforts were really just a drop in the ocean. There were all kinds of incredible people, real ghosts, who came together to help those thrust into such a horrible predicament. The UNHCR ended up donating nearly 1 million metric tons of supplies. There were others too who ventured into the war zone to deliver food and medicine, 
non Camaros, but some just in Volkswagen Beetles. Another interesting act of service was when Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden decided to sneak into Sarajevo during the middle of the war in 1994 to perform for the people who had been through so much. I want to mention that some have been critical of Helga for his use of resources, his partnerships with certain donors, and for pushing his story over the years. But I think even if all of his efforts were self-serving and to fulfill his own dreams, he still made huge contributions, both directly to those in need and indirectly, by inspiring others to take similar courses of action. He's still sharing his stories from his home in Germany and still has his Camaro, even if his wife isn't a fan. He wishes he could still take the car out to help others and has mentioned that he'd love to be able to help those in need with the current conflict in the Ukraine. But despite being in great shape for his age, at 76 years old, he's finally decided to slow down. Still, the ripples from his actions carry on. And in the spirit of Helga, the ad revenue this video generates in the first month will be donated to the Hope for Ukraine charity. I really hope you enjoyed this story. As always, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel, and I hope you have a great day.